zombie. Also something, uh, a word I actually use really often in, in the past few months to describe how I feel like I've been sort of moving through and uh, moving about the world. So again, comforting to know that I am certainly not the only one. Now, I'm not sure how long ago you recorded that song, but are you still feeling that way now? Yo, I just had a text thread about that today. I was like, bruh, I, I cannot do this like ritual rigid like thing anymore I'm about to jump out a window i was like looking at pictures <laughs> of us in south africa looking at pictures of like being on a beach in cali house parties i was like damn what's going on right now <laughs> this is ridiculous so i definitely feel it man you know it's like sometimes you just gotta mask up and go kick it with the homies because the ritual is crazy if i do another virtual meeting with my friends i'm gonna die i don't want no more virtual all right, what's up, y'all? So I wanted to play that before I get into talking about things to give context to what I'm about to say. Now, anybody knows me knows that I am, I call myself the number one Lecrae fan. I listened to this interview again today. I listened to it, caught the end of it yesterday. I think I caught that part after the zombie. He was talking to Nadeska, who is um, on, a, has a radio show on Apple about the song Zombie. And see, I kind of get it when it comes to people that have a critique of Lecrae in some aspects. Like I said, I'm a fan. I don't really, I've never really come out and, and critiqued Lecrae like that because, you know, I understand what he's doing and, and his angle on everything. But I will say this about that song. I think that some people in the church that are Christians, they get upset in instances like this. Now, we all know the song Zombie was basically about new life in Christ. It was about how before Christ we were dead in our trespasses and sins and we were zombies. I mean, the, the lyrics of the song are pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty self-explanatory to understand that that song really has nothing to do with exhaustion as it pertains to feeling like a zombie and has everything to do with how when you're in the world you're living according to the flesh you're dead in your trespasses and sins and God comes in and redeems you and makes you alive in him uh, so one of the things I, I, I guess I would say and I won't even put this really on the cray at first I'll put this on the desk she said that zombie is something or is a term that she's been using often or that's come up a lot to describe how she's been feeling with everything going on i guess the business or whatever the case may be um but this song had nothing to do with feeling like a zombie because of how busy you are the song explicitly had everything to do with being a zombie because you was after flesh everything that you did before christ you were like a zombie. I was after flesh. I guess I was some kind of zombie. Demons used to haunt me. I'm so glad Jesus called me. Like it has everything to do with explaining the process of salvation. And I just think that, you know, it's very apparent from just Nadeska's question and response to the song that the point was missed on her. It was an opportunity to minister to her and Lecrae was very explicit in Zombie. Zombie is like one of my favorite songs. And for her to ask him if he still feels like that, like he just created the song, talk about I'm so tired, I feel like a zombie because I'm going and I'm doing all this other stuff. The song was explicitly saying how he was after Barbies, how he was running with his folks. At 17, he thought he fell in love with a stripper. It's talking about all the things of this world. And the message is, if you live according to the world, you are a zombie. And then Christ calls you and makes you alive. I mean, Christians, we already know. But it just it just amazed me that it kind of it kind of fell on deaf ears. And it's no fault of Lecrae's. It's really not no fault of Lecrae's. Now, what I will say is in the interview, had she asked me, I would say if I was in Lecrae's shoes and she asked me, oh, Lecrae, do you still feel that way? I would have been like, well, no, I don't feel that way because it wasn't a feeling. That song was about how when I was running after sin and when I was doing my own thing, I was a zombie. But Christ made me, you know, new. 
and he called me and I'm saved and I'm, you know, yeah, he called me, I'm saved uh, and born again in Christ. So no, I don't feel like that because the song isn't about a feeling. It's about a condition that my soul was in. But Lecrae answered the question and was just like, I'm tired of quarantine. I want to mask up and, and go out. If I have to do another virtual this, a virtual that, you know, I, sometimes you just got to get out, mask up and go. And that's cool and everything. But I just noticed that, like, I just noticed that the the powerful and message and the potency of that song was kind of missed on the desk. And then it kind of wasn't caught on the back end by Lecrae. So it's a little critique. It's like, yo, Cray, you know. If you ever have to be in that situation again and somebody kind of tries to curtail the message of the song, just let them know, hey, yo, you know, I don't feel like that because it wasn't a feeling. This is about my transformation. And that was a key opportunity, I think. That was a key opportunity to delve a little bit into. I'm not saying you have to preach, but that was a key opportunity to kind of course correct and delve a little bit into letting her know, no, this is about my soul transformation. Uh, last thing I will say is this. A lot of people, when they saw Lecrae on a panel with Louis Giglio and Dan Cathody uh, of Chick-fil-A, black Twitter came for Lecrae and black people in general came for Lecrae because it just seemed like he let the white blessing comment fly. And then Lecrae in that interview, of course, corrected. And he even said countless times that he was thinking about the bunch of white people that was in the room instead of thinking about us, thinking about his people colored people and so i will say pass off to him for that and just in this instance when it's something spiritual i think what christians are looking for lecrae to do christians are looking for lecrae to course correct in this regard as well it's great i'm not against you know social justice or anything like that i'm all for the cause as a matter of fact i learned most of that uh you know majority of that from from lecrae but I think on the spiritual sense, on the side of Christianity, Christians are looking for the same respect from not only Lecrae, but from everybody else that's in those those spheres of influence. Everybody else that has those platforms, we're looking for people to put the gospel on front street. And a lot of times, you know, the ball is dropped. We know what you meant with zombie. We know what you mean in your music. But when it comes to an opportunity to course correct, just like you did with the whole white blessing thing, that's what Christians want. We want you to course correct when it comes to the gospel. That's what I was looking for. And I just drew that up as a comparison because I think it's important to make a critique like that. Somebody tries to sidestep the agenda and the message of a song like Zombie. I feel that that's something that has to be corrected because it's just like this song wasn't about me being tired and feeling like a zombie in the sense that the natural man understands. I was dead in my trespasses and sins, as the Bible says, and Jesus called me and I'm born again. And you have an opportunity to be born again, too. You don't have to be a zombie. It's not about tiredness. It's about being dead in sin. And I just think that that point was missed. And it was kind of. I don't want to say disappointing. It was just an observation. I will say that it was an observation that I made, something I wanted to come on and talk about and um, just make a critique as a brother in the faith. And so that's my piece. If we're going to course correct with racial issues and white blessing statements, then don't let people like Nadeska get away with taking a song about salvation and making it about stress or, you know, something that it's not about because that's not cool. It's not cool for her to have the message of salvation fall on dead ears. And it's not cool to just let it fly and not to say anything about it to bring her mind back to the topic of the song, which was salvation. That's all. No harm, no foul. I still love Lecrae. I'm still a number one Lecrae fan. That's one of the reasons why I came on here to make this critique and to do this video. Because in this day and age, we got to start being bolder. We just have to be start. We have to start being bolder and more explicit. We can't afford not to. All right, y'all.